Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. So everybody, everybody knows the yield curve is inverted massively right now, but what does it mean and how does it get inverted in the first place? Well, forget everything that you've heard in the mainstream media. Forget everything that you've been taught. I think there is a maybe more simple reason and a far more sinister reason the yield curve inverts so maybe we're going to have to put on the tinfoil hat for this video. But I think you'll enjoy this. We're going to connect some dots. Let's go right over to CNBC. And I want to play a video from Paul Tudor Jones. This is from January of 2020 in Davos, of all places, the World Economic Forum. Check this out. Do we... We know a lot about this virus, I think. I, I would think we'd be able to develop something pretty quickly. There's, there's, there's no antidote. There's no vaccination. Can't do it. There's no cure. Anything. We don't even know what the incubation period is. Right. And you're obviously getting ready to go to the biggest travel period in China. So w when we're going to find out, we, we kind of know what how lethal it is. It seems a little bit less than SARS was, but we don't know. Uh, how virulent it is, and now we've got this time bomb of travel taking place in China. So are you see through this or not? Right. I mean, on, on a morning like today, when David Tepper right. on I'm Friday— I'm a trader, not an investor. Correct. So if I was an investor, I'd, I'd be really nervous. Uh, if From a trading standpoint, you, there's zero way I'd want to be long. There you go. So obviously, Paul Tudor Jones, Jones is not just an insider— but he is one of the, the he is the quintessential insider. There is nobody that's more of an insider, <laughs> other than maybe like like uh, George Soros or something like that. So, and keep in mind, guys, this was January, January of 2020. He obviously knew what was going on, and based on how extensive his knowledge was, you could tell that he did he had more information than what was just privy to the public he had quote unquote insider information and my guess is he probably had had or he probably had this insider information maybe even months prior to this interview on CNBC all right josh i'm going to go ahead and screen the share or i'm going to do the screen share one more time here because now I want to go to uh, another article from CNBC or another story from CNBC and this is regarding the same time frame Davos this is January 20 uh January 22 of 2020 business leaders in Davos privately express concerns about China's surveillance sickness they say some business leaders raise concerns about the virus with Trump during a breakfast one Wednesday morning. None of these business leaders wanted to be named. This was all kind of uh, off the record, if you will. So now let's think about this. Paul Tudor Jones, the insider of all insiders, has extensive knowledge as to what's going on here in January of 2020. You've got all these business leaders that obviously have extensive knowledge. How? How was the question? Now let's go over to another article from CNBC. Same time frame. And this is an article from September of 2020. 22, but it references back to January, February of 2020. Unsealed FBI docs reveal a flurry of calls and stock trades by Senator Burr in early 2020. Now, I don't want to single him out. There were multiple politicians <laughs> that did this, but let's look at what he did. I think there's some interesting clues here. So key talking points is after two years, okay, they found him not guilty. And they have all these text messages going back and forth. That That's not really what I'm after. 
What I'm after is what he actually did. So uh, if you guys didn't follow this story, he not only was a politician with insider information, but he was the head or the chair, whatever they call it, of this one committee in particular that would receive briefings on the Cerveza sickness even prior to the other politicians receiving it. So the ultimate insider information. So once he got this information, what did he do? Well, as most of you know, he sold almost all of his stock. Uh, it says here that uh, this same day he sold 110000 But overall, he sold, I think, well over a million dollars, maybe even over $2 million of stock. And again, this was January, February of 2020. While he's coming out and saying, oh, yeah, the Cerveza sickness thing, no problem. We got it under control. Yeah, no problem. And he's like, sell, 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 sell. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets done with his interview and he's actually on his cell phone. But what else did he do? He not only sold all of his shares, or most of them, but he purchased what? 1.2 million of treasuries. To the point where he was using 76% of total holdings to do what? to buy treasuries. You see? My point here is to show you that there are individuals like Paul Tudor Jones, uh, Bill Gates maybe, George Soros, these, these mega billionaires with a lot of connections that get information way, 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 way before even the media let alone the general public. They're getting phone calls from people that are, in, in this case, most likely insiders in China and insiders in the scientific community calling George Soros, calling Paul Tudor Jones and saying, hey, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. And then they go ahead and make trades based on that information that nobody else is privy to. Other than, the, other than the people that have that specific boots on the ground knowledge. And in this scenario where the stuff is going to hit the fan, regardless of whether it's a housing crisis, a mortgage-backed security crisis, or it's the Cerveza sickness, or XYZ, these people are doing one major trade, buying treasuries and buying the long end of the curve. But I'm not done. Let's go back to 2019. Actually, before we do, I'm going to go to the inversion of the curve here and walk through this. But before we do this, let's actually go to this article from Yahoo. GOP report says October... 2019, Wuhan military games were one of the earliest super spreader events. So let's just assume this is true for a moment. If this was a super spreader event, that means the Cerveza sickness would have had to have been circulating, let's say, or at least out of the lab, assuming that's where it came from, prior to October. <laughs> More specifically, this article or this report Oh, look at this. I didn't re I didn't realize this report had this intel. Within a month, satellite images showed a significant uptick in the number of people at hospitals. Huh. Wow. But the important part of this article that I wanted to point out is where it states, and I'm looking for it here. This report claimed that the Cerveza sickness most likely leaked from the lab, assuming that's what happened, in August 
They said late August to early September. Those were the specific dates. And um, well, I'm not sure exactly. I remember it's on my other computer. Josh, we really need a highlighter tool, man. We really need that highlighter tool. But the bottom line is it said late August to early September. Now, let's go back to the yield curve here. This is the three-month, 10-year. And you'll notice that it was flattening out. So there were economic headwinds that the market was picking up on. But look at what happened in August, late August, and early September. The yield curve gets really inverted to a point where it's at its maximum inversion, August 30th. Then, I believe the Fed came out, if we look at Fed funds, and they started dropping rates right here. Start dropping rates at the exact same time. Now, you may say, George, well, the employment rate was probably skyrocketing and doing all these things. No, you'd be wrong. The employment rate back then was 3.6, almost exactly where it is today when everyone's talking about how low the unemployment rate is. So you say, George, well, he was obviously doing this because of the repo spike. Well, let's think about this. The repo, the repo uh, spike was September 2019, but September 17th of 2019. That was after we had this, what at the time was the maximum inversion of the curve. So if I'm going to put on the tinfoil hat really quick, and let's be honest, over the past three years, most conspiracy theories have become conspiracy facts. But I would argue that there's a possibility that the reason we had the repo spike was because of the information that the insiders and the banksters were getting from the scientists or whomever had that boots on the ground intel from Wuhan, which drove the yield curve down and made it invert to its maximum level at the end of August. Why? Because all those insiders like Paul Tudor Jones, George Soros, get the call from the Wuhan lab, and what do they do? They buy treasuries, which does what? It makes the yield go down. So for a long time, even when I was doing videos back then, I assumed that, well, number one, I assumed the Fed was dropping rates because of, of repo. And number two, I was assuming that the Fed, uh, that uh, the repo spike, you know, this kind of happens out of nowhere. But again, maybe, just maybe, the repo spike happened as a result of the intel that the insiders were getting from Wuhan, which prompted them to buy treasuries. Hopefully that makes sense. So my point in doing this video is to present maybe an alternative narrative that is at least worth thinking through. That maybe, just maybe, the reason the yield curve is inversion has basically a 100% hit rate going all the way back to the 1950s, isn't because the bond market is just lucky. It's not because the bond market is good. It's because the bond market or the people who are impacting the bond market have insider information. And with that insider information, they're correct almost 100% of the time. 
funny how it works that way. <laughs> so we'll continue to follow the yield curve as it steepens out. That's usually when the stuff hits the fan. But for those of you, and I get this question all the time, George, why does the yield curve invert in the first place? Why does it do it? Why does it do it? Maybe this is the reason. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. We'll see you in the next video.